Hi traders, welcome to this video. Today I want to show you how you add the S&P 500 to your chart in TradingView. That's a question you sent me a lot and I will answer that here in the video. And I don't want to only show you how to add the indicator or the S&P 500 to your chart. I also want to explain you um, how I use it and um, yeah, what's the reason I have the S&P 500 below every chart. You can see it here as the last uh, panel. So here's the S&P 500, above that is the volume and um, on the first panel there is the relative strength line. I produced another video about that, so look into my YouTube channel and you will uh, find the video there. Okay, first of all, I remove this panel now from my chart. And um, it's very easy to add the S&P 500 or any other index or any other stock or commodity or whatever uh, to your existing um, trading view chart. So there is a button here, um, it's called compare. And um, in, inside this compare um, dialog, you have two options. The first one is compare. So then um, another um, instrument like an index, for example, will be added to your main chart. Um, but you can also use the add symbol functionality. And this is the functionality I'm using to add the S&P 500 to the chart. You can also, um, when, when, you, um, when you add an instrument to your chart, you can also say that you want to overlay it to the main chart. So then in, in that case, um, the index will appear here in the same panel as the Apple um, chart itself. So, but I don't want to do that here. And um, now I use an S&P 500 um, symbol you can either use, for example, ETFs like the SPY, but you can also use SPX. And this is the index I am using here. So you can use this one here, for example, or you can use uh, that one. That's not so, so uh, important. There's no big difference between um, both. So I'm using this one here. And now you can see that TradingView automatically added a new panel um, below all panels and that is the S&P 500 now. Um, you can also uh, style it a little bit when you click here on this uh, settings icon or when you for example click uh, with a right um, yeah with a with a, a right mouse button on the line itself and goes to the setting dialog and then you can um, style it a little uh, a little bit and um, yeah, I personally want to um, want to have a black line here because I don't want to have so much focus on the S&P 500 here, and I want to um, yeah have a thin line instead of a more thick line. So and that's it. That's how you add the S&P 500 to your chart. And now it's a question: Why I have it on my chart? And that's very simple. Um, when I go through historical charts, like we have here with Apple, so I can look into the past, then I always can compare it very easily to the S&P 500. And that's important for me because I want to see when, I, when I'm backtesting or when I uh, want to learn something about market cycles, I always want to see how the stock performs in comparison to the S&P 500. And now this here is the Apple chart. And you can see in the last, in the last weeks here, um, the S&P 500 was stronger. You can see that here, the S&P 500, for example, um, is on a new high here and um, Apple not. So that means that Apple is underperforming the S&P 500 in that case. And it helps me a lot when I also look, for example, at tops. When here Apple topped out exactly with the S&P 500 or when I look at bottoms. So when you, for example, uh, look here, Apple bottomed exactly with the um, S&P 500. 
That's not unusual because Apple is, is one of the largest components of the S&P 500. But when we look at other stocks, for example, here I prepared an example, Pinterest. You know that from my free newsletter, I highlighted the stock uh, multiple times in my free newsletter. And in that situation, you can see, or I want to highlight um, this situation here, uh, when, uh, when uh, Pinterest goes sideways, and the S&P 500 was in a correction. And this, this information is important for me because I want to see um, that the stock is outperforming the S&P 500. So it's much stronger than the S&P 500 because that's a sign that institutions are buying the stock, are holding the stock and do not sell it with the indices. And this is, that's what I'm looking for. And um, I also look when you go back a little bit here in the chart history, you can see, for example, here a situation, the S&P 500 broke down and also Pinterest broke down. But Pinterest was already here in a downtrend while the S&P 500 was in an uptrend here. And these are all information I get very quickly when I have the S&P 500 in my chart. Um, I also get um, the clues here from, from the relative strength line because it's, yeah, it's very similar um, to, um, to the, not to the S&P 500, but the, the relative strength line shows the outperformance against the S&P 500. But it's uh, helpful for me also to see um, all the price behavior from the S&P 500 itself. So, and you can of course use it for, um, for indices, for example. If you look here at the QQQs, which is the NASDAQ, you can see um, how the NASDAQ behaves in comparison with um, the S&P 500. And there are sometimes um, differences between the uh, indices. Now you can see that here, for example, the S&P 500 is already printing a new high and the NASDAQ um, is uh, still below the new high. And that's a clue. That's a clue that uh, the S&P 500 is moving uh, much faster. And I said it in the introduction, for me, it's, it's very interesting to see that um, in the history. So when I move back, for example, uh, in Apple, and I want to see how Apple behaved um, in a different year in comparison, for example, with the S&P 500, it's very easy. I do not have to open multiple charts. I do not have to switch be between charts. I can see everything on one uh, on one screen here and you can always see okay how did the S&P 500 behaved here in 2016 how does for example Apple behaved here and this uh, this is interesting because you can see that Apple for example retested multiple times the low uh, while the S&P 500 here was already in an uptrend and then the rally also started with Apple and yeah, that helps me a lot to learn about charts and to learn about market cycles and um, how everything uh, fits together. <clears throat> and I use it also in the weekly chart. So when I, for example, here switch back now uh, in my split screen view where I have on the left side the uh, weekly chart and on the right side um, the daily chart, you can see that I added here the um, SPX or the S&P 500 um, also to the weekly chart and I can go back and um, see how it behaves in the past. And that's very interesting. Uh, you can study here the tops. So for example, you, you, you can see here that Apple topped out and uh, the S&P 500 uh, was already going up. Oh yeah, was in an uptrend or still in an uptrend in that situation and um, yeah when you can look back uh, um, years and decades and uh, that makes it so interesting for me okay to sum it up um, quickly i show you how to add the indicator to your uh, trading view um, chart that's very easy so and um, 
Again, I use it mostly when I go through historical charts to see how the um, stock behaved um, in comparison to the, um, to the index, to the market itself. And it's a very helpful tool also if you compare indices um, with each other in the past. Okay, I hope that this video helped you um, <clears throat> and I answered the question you sent me um, um, sufficient. And um, yeah, if you want to follow me, of course, you can do that here on YouTube. If you have questions, uh, please leave a comment or if you like the video, give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you don't like it. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, but I personally recommend to subscribe to my free newsletter. I send it out every Sunday with trading tips and also with three candidates from my personal watch list. And as a welcome gift, you get my free ebook, My Personal 25 Lessons from the Stock Market.